Breaker TV. This is Ed Park, aka Togrim, bringing you my beta preview for the Jedi Knight Sentinel class. This is a dual wielding melee DPS spec that packs a lot of punch. And I'm going to talk about the class mechanics, my spec, and show you footage from a hutball. The core mechanic is called Focus. They're basically points up to 12 that build up on the character as you use certain abilities and you spend them on focus consuming abilities. You can think of it as combo points that build up on the player instead of the target. Strike is the bread and butter focus generating ability, although you'll only want to use it when other uh, focus generating abilities are on cooldown. Force Leap is our charge mechanic. You can close the gap from 10 to 30 meters. It applies a root effect on your target and it generates three focus. All Sentinels get an awesome ability called Zealous Strike. It instantly generates six focus and has a 15 second cooldown. This ability is really important because it gives you plenty of focus to work with in terms of your special abilities. So one of the special abilities that I like the most is called Blade Storm. It's a core trainable Jedi Knight ability. It hits like a truck and it's usable out to 10 meters of range. We also have Slash which has no cooldown. It's also a, a finisher, but it doesn't hit as hard as abilities like Bladestorm. We get an awesome defensive ability called Rebuke, and it's a 6 second buff that provides 20% damage mitigation. And when you're attacked, this buff will refresh and reflects damage back to the attacker, and it can last as long as 30 seconds total when it gets refreshed. We have a really important ability that you get at level 16 called Leg Slash. This is the hamstring or um, snare ability. We also get an ability called Force Kick, I think at 18, that is a interrupt that uh, is also a spell lockout. And then at 18, we get Crippling Throw, which is the healing debuff. You can basically keep a single target heal debuff um, by chaining it. As far as spec, you get your choice of three different DPS damage trees with different mechanics. I'm currently using the Focus tree. There is a really nice buff on the first level here that buffs up your force damage and another that adds an additional second to the root effect for force leap and there's a nice buff in the second tier that increases the crit percentage for slash which is the spammable focus consuming ability and there's also a really interesting buff in the second tier here that reduces the cooldown of your force attacks when you're in chicho form and this is really critical because Bladestorm is, in my opinion, our best DPS ability at lower levels. And it reduces, when you're in Chicho form, it reduces the cooldown from 12 seconds to 9 seconds. And remember, Bladestorm is usable out to 10 meters, so it's like a mini ranged finisher. The Alderaan War Zone is a node control fight where there are three nodes along an X axis in the map. And the goal is to control those nodes and burn down the enemy ship's health from 600 to 0. The nodes being on an x-axis has some interesting gameplay implications, which I'll talk through. So let's take a look at a hutball match. I'm at level 18 here, and Sentinel PvP really picks up at level 16 once you get Leg Slash, and then at 18 you get the healing debuff. So I can tell looking at the map, I'm the only purple guy who came to this node, and I don't want to give the Imperials a free cap, so I force sleep into this level 24 Marauder, so this is my mirror class, but six uh, levels higher, and I immediately pop Rebuke and Saber Warden. You can see now, even though I'm outnumbered 1v3, I'm still able to put out some significant damage on this target here. And this really speaks to the strength of the Sentinel class. It can deal tremendous amounts of single target DPS burst damage. And I'll talk about the limitations of the class, but you can see they're even outnumbered 1 versus 3 against a higher level opponent. I was able to burn his health down to about 35%. I head over to the west node to defend and I get caught out in the open by a level 21 Sork and a 50 Sork. So I start strafing back toward my help at the node and I get some clutch healing here from a smuggler named Nitrous. So you notice after four sleep I use Master Strike. Master Strike is a 3 second channel ability. It is a self root. You can't move or otherwise it will cancel the channel. And it's great because the rooting effect of Force Sleep a lot of times will guarantee you to get a full 3 second Master Strike channel off and it hits like a truck. So we were trying to beat on that level 50 Sorcerer and not getting anywhere fast. We go ahead and switch over to level 21 Sorcerer and notice I'm chaining my healing debuff, Crippling Throw, whenever it's off global cooldown. So we're continuing to pressure. You know, these Sorcerers have knockbacks and bubbles, so this is definitely taking a, time, a long time to 
attack them. And one thing that I should have done here, I'm level 18, so I now have the uh, Force Kick ability. Um, but when he's when he's starting to cast, you can see that little blue bar underneath. I should cast because it creates a three second, sorry, four second spell lockout. That's definitely something I need to make sure to do since I just picked up that new ability. All right, so we're applying pressure, and we do a fast switch over to this level 50 player. I notice that he's at uh, low health, and then we burn him down, and then we get back on the 21 sorcerer. So you can tell, even though I'm only level 18 here with the bolster mechanic, I am able to hit pretty hard. And then I get back and use Force Leap. And you can see Force Leap can cover a lot of ground, and it can also um, it can also get you up Z-axis, you know, vertical levels as well, as long as you have line of sight on the target. Level 50 Bounty Hunter comes over. This player was the top damage dealer in the match, and as soon as Master Strike's done, I apply Leg Slash for the Snare. So I'm trying to keep as much pressure on this um, Bounty Hunter as possible, and you notice he goes ahead and knocks me back, but it's okay because my Force Leap is off global cooldown. I go ahead and charge back in and get Cauterize on him for the dot. Cauterize is an awesome ability. It has an upfront damage component and then a very heavy dot. I love that animation of throwing the lightsaber. And right here I use Bladesworn from distance and I strafe kite away to create enough separation to be able to force sleep back in and then I get stunned and the smuggler comes over and finishes off the bounty hunter. In a 1v1 it's really critical to get the opener. I go ahead and force sleep in to this higher level Marauder. Again this is a mirror match. Actually sorry this is a Juggernaut. No it's a Marauder. He's got two lightsabers. Okay, and I, you can see a bunch of damage ticks there. Those are all from the reflective component of Rebuke. It's just an awesome ability, and toward the end of the fight there, uh, my friendlies come over and they provide some healing. Although I think the fight was actually going in my favor since I had the uh, got the jump on him first and he was at 80% health to start. So you can take the time to get quickly to the far node. There are run speed buffs, and so you can traverse the map. You don't have to go through the center node, which can be pretty painful. And... The east node is totally overrun. I could tell based on looking at the number of purple icons moving around the map, there was some heavy fighting because nobody called out the uh, incoming. So I go ahead and get on a target. It happens to be that same level 50 bounty hunter that I've been fighting a few minutes ago. And I'm trying to keep pressure on him so that he can't sit down and free cast because I know if he does that, he's going to blow people up. And I'm very careful here. Try to use Blade Storm and Cauterize as much as possible whenever they're um, off global cooldown because, you know, they, they hit hard. Bladestorm is great single target burst, and Cauterize it hits a pretty, you know, has a nice upfront component, but also has that excellent dot. I find a target that's at fairly low health. I go ahead and charge in with Force Sleep. And one of the most important things about playing a Jedi Knight or Sith Warrior well is managing your focus. So you can see I filled up my focus bar so I don't use focus generating abilities, and I chew through my focus with special attacks, and we burn down a player, and then we burn down another player there. Now, I can kind of tell this in grief just watching other Jedi Knights or Sentinels, uh, sorry, Jedi Knights or Sith Warriors play. If they allow their focus bar to overfill up and they're not spending it fast enough, then they're not doing the right thing. You absolutely want to keep generating focus and spending it so that you can use your special abilities. That's really where the strength of this class lies as far as dealing burst DPS. So I'm trying as much as possible whenever to get on targets to make sure they are leg slashed. Even if it's a melee, it makes it a lot easier to keep them in range. And... Leg Slash has a very long duration. It's like 12 seconds. So you can see I had switched away from this target, but the Leg Slash effect is still on, and we go ahead and drop him. And then another player comes by here, and I switch targets quickly and get the killing blow on him. He gives me that accolade Targum is unbeatable. I think that means I've gotten six total killing blows in the match so far. And, you know, in this fighting over on the East Node, I haven't really been getting much meaningful healing. So the main reason I've been able to stay up is I've been using my cooldowns. I've had Rebuke up. Uh, it just Rebuke lasted the full 30 seconds, I think. It just came off... Um, it just wore off there, and then I popped Saber Ward. Now, right there, I should have popped Saber, Saber Ward earlier, knowing that I'm not getting healing. And the awesome thing is, if you have a node, you can rejoin that node defense with an edge speeder bike, and this doesn't go and fly around the middle. This goes straight to the node, and it's a great mechanic for allowing an outnumbered force hold the node by just continuing to fly back in like I just did. So force leap in, master strike... And then I go ahead and drop this player with the help of all these other friendlies. And at this point, I know that we've beaten off the east side attack, so I go to check out west. I'm at about 40% health here, and that 24 Marauder force leaps into me. Unfortunately, both of my mitigation abilities, Saber Ward and Rebuke, are on cooldown. And in a second here, this 
opponent uses his level 24 channeled stun, which is an awesome ability. And I get a repost proc right here. It's an instant cast burst ability off the global cooldown whenever you have a successful defense. So you want to make sure to use it. To be honest with you, the low level Jedi Knight and Sith Warrior PvP can be frustrating at times. A big reason for this is we don't get our meaningful crowd control ability until level 24, which is 10 levels later than the other six advanced classes start getting their really cool crowd control. And so, you know, it can make it really hard to stay in contact of opponents and control them. This level 15 Imperial Agent is one of the top two ones that I've seen in the past week. She's only level 15, but she finished third overall in damage for this war zone behind only a 50 bounty hunter and 50 sorcerer that you've seen previously. So she smartly drops her portable cover there. I can't force charge in, and I should have used Rebuke immediately. That would have taken the edge off of those 2k damage shots that she was dealing, but I pop Rebuke here, get Cauterize on her, and you'll see a ton of little yellow numbers. Those are from the damage reflect as well as the dot. And then I managed to drop her. If we were both at full health and I didn't have a healer around, she would probably take me down. She's got too much crowd control and that player is very smart with the timing and placement of portable cover. I am planning to roll a Sentinel at launch um, for my guild and our PvP for both War Zones and World PvP especially. I'm going to be one of our uh, main target assists and having the damage of the Sentinel combined with the healing debuff and its ability to close gaps quickly will be really useful in organized PvP. So we win this war zone pretty decisively and I finish fourth overall in damage behind only the level 50 bounty hunter and sorcerer and the that skilled level 15 imperial agent. I finished with 16 kills, 6 killing blows. The top healer in the match was a smuggler with over 340k healing so that player gets my MVP vote. I will be cranking out a lot more Swotor content so please like and subscribe to this video and follow me at Togrim. I am live streaming, check out my channel for the schedule, and I am also joining the Game Breaker Republic Show cast. Take care. Game Breaker TV.